Excellent. Uh, so, hey everyone, I'm TJ Hughes. Um, I created this uh, interactive food art game called Noor. Um, if you haven't seen it, uh, it's a game where uh, you're presented with a MIDI Fighter 3D, uh, which is this device. Um, and so you press buttons on it to inter interact with uh, food scenes that are in front of you. Um, uh, and so like each button does something different um, and there's no like goals or objectives to the game. It's just open-ended uh, free fun. Um, and so, uh, yeah, the game is out, out there and uh, rules in play and uh, I couldn't be there physically, so I couldn't really check out the exhibit, but uh, I, I hope people really had fun with it. Um, and so uh, a little bit about uh, demoing the game and uh, sort of developing it to be demoed. Um, so first off, uh, I, I guess I'll start with a story. Uh, so it started... Hold on one second. Oh, my mic messed up. Uh, so yeah, the game started out uh, as not even a game. Uh, I just decided, oh, hey, I wonder if I can make uh, ramen in Unity, or I wonder if I can make all these different like types of foods uh, in in the Unity game engine. Uh, and at first I was just making it sort of as art, not even thinking about uh, an interactive component to it or it being a game at all, even though it's developing in a game engine. Um, and so uh, through that, um, I kind of just started experimenting because this local event wanted me to uh, show off my game. And so uh, I first started off with uh, keyboard controls. And so for that, I used the uh, Razer Chroma keyboard, the <laughs> this one actually, uh, with all the like fancy clicky keys. And you can see that the buttons even will individually respond when you press them. Uh, and so it was a it's it was an interesting controller. Um, and uh, because you like you can like sort of modify each LED on the light, so you can have it where um, only like a certain portion of the keyboard is lit up and I sort of use that as my like 16 buttons to control the game. Um, but as I kept uh, developing it, uh, I was wondering what other more interesting ways could I control it. And so uh, shortly after that, I discovered the MIDI fighter and I kind of remembered that like sort of in my uh, circle of just like game development friends and all that, like a lot of people are trying to use like MIDI controllers to uh, control games. Um, and so I, I kind of became really enamored with that idea, and uh, I was, and uh, when I discovered the MIDI Fighter 3D, I thought like this is the perfect chance uh, to take a MIDI controller and like uh, put it in my game and also have it like fit my aesthetic because the the MIDI Fighter is a really colorful controller. I don't know if you've actually seen the demo, um, but the the controller itself is just really pretty, and then. Um, on top of that, of course, uh, I added these little like food uh, <laughs> like uh, resins to it just to add to the aesthetic. And so um, I thought that just really fit in with the project. And um, and it really did. Um, so it, it was a really good way to make the controller fit the aesthetic of the game to really make it all one cohesive experience. Um, now, as far as demoing, um, it's it's really interesting uh, because at first, um, like at least when I'm doing in person, I can't really speak to how it's been at uh, rules and play. I really hope it's it's been good, but uh, uh, demoing the game in person, I would notice that um, sometimes uh, people weren't sure because when they see the like sort of unconventional controller, they're just like, "How do I approach this?" Or just like, "What's that? Can I even touch that?" And so. Um, it's like they're hesitant at first, but then uh, they're just like kind of drawn in. And then, uh, like, I just say, like, how I pitch the game is press buttons, and I, I kind of don't really give much direction other than that. And uh, I just kind of like see what people do. Um, and so, and like, they people usually start with uh, just pressing one button, like, just slowly just to see what happens. And then after that, they, they press another and then all of a sudden they're like spamming the controller. And like, I find that that's a really like uh, interesting and also just like fun way to experience the game. It's, it's my sound keeps coming, cutting out, um, but it's kind of this uh, just like joy of discovery type thing that happens when uh, when you're presented a weird controller and you're not really told uh, 
what to do with it. Uh, I hope my audio is still good. Uh, let me know if it's not. Um, and so uh, beyond that, um, one, one instance of, uh, of feedback that I've gotten um, is when I when demoing the game, uh, there was a scene that wasn't quite done yet. And also I was trying to figure out what the buttons should do in that scene. Um, and so I had one uh, played tester or one, one player that I was demoing to, uh, they actually got quite frustrated at, uh, at the scene because um, not all the buttons had been hooked up. And uh, like when they would press a button, there wouldn't be immediate feedback. And like that kind of frustrated them almost to the point where they were kind of rude. Uh, but I like I just found that interesting that like if you don't uh, have immediate feedback while like uh, pressing a button or pressing a command in in your game when you expect it to, um, that it causes just frustration in the demoer. And so um, I, I've just learned that having an immediate like an equal like response when when the user presses a button. Is just like super valuable, and it was a takeaway I kind of had from that experience. Um, I'm not quite sure I'm how I'm doing on time, um, but um, beyond that, uh, I also am uh, working with um, trying to expand the game to more controllers, more MIDI controllers specifically. Um, because when you're making a game that uh, has such an unconventional controller, uh, it can be difficult because it's just like, okay, once you decide to retail a game, how will other people control the game? And so um, that's sort of why I'm, uh, I'm working with uh, expanding it to work with pretty much any MIDI controller um, because all MIDI comes in like relatively the same, so it should theoretically work with any. So like I'm even trying to port the game to this. So uh, this is like the... This is just the MIDI Fighter, but like bigger. This is the MIDI Fighter 64, so it's pretty much like four of the smaller ones. Um, and so I'm working with like making the game compatible with that. Um, and so, um, so it, my approach to it is kind of uh, making it so that any controller you might have like can control the game, and like that's almost a game in and of itself because then it creates the like curiosity of okay, if I plug in this different controller. What will happen? Uh, how will it control the game? Like, how will the whole experience be different? Um, and so, uh, that's sort of my workaround to the like, um, what do you do uh, once your unconventional game like goes to retail? Uh, it's sort of just making more, um, making more of a discovery and making a game almost out of like what kind of controllers you have accessible to you. Um, and I'll leave it open for questions.